welcome back to a, uh, another fantastic day here at Mr. Rotter's neighborhood. Uh, since we're waiting on parts for our rockers, I decided to kind of just reassemble them and throw them on the motor um, in hopes of being able to turn it upside down so I can get back to work on that windage tray. So I'll, I'll show you what I got going on and uh, what I've done so far. So that way you can uh, stay up to speed on oil control in this uh, super stock Buick 364. Okay, so with the crankshaft scraper completed and the rear windage tray installed, um, I took another 300 Buick uh, windage tray and modified it quite a bit today to make it work. Um, normally it would fit uh, about like, like that. Um, but all I did was kind of copy what I had going on in the rear and uh, flipped it around. Now there is some openings here that are considerably larger than uh, than what's in the rear, uh, but I think we are going to be able to make this work uh, and put the mesh in here uh, for the purpose of having a full windage tray on the small block Buick. Um, the idea here is uh, I'm going to probably just uh, weld it directly to the uh, crankshaft scraper on the, the driver's side, um, just for the purpose of having something to hold it in place. But uh, I do think it is gonna end up working here and uh, give me a, you know, look, that's, these holes are all for clearance, unfortunately. For some reason, th this windage tray is meant to fit uh, this way. So it has a little bit uh, more room on one side than the other. Um, so, Unfortunately, put it in here like this, uh, it's a little bit closer on th this side than it normally would be. So I think that's where kind of my clearance issues came from. But uh, in other words though, I, I pretty much got plenty of room in there uh, to get the screen in. And the only place it gets close is up here on top. I had to, op I had to actually, um, I had to mold it up some. So with a hammer and dolly, I beat it up uh, quite a bit. Um, same thing here. This is a uh, oh, this is a clearance notch for the rod bolt. But uh, all in all, everything seems to clear. Uh, now it's to the point where I can start fabricating some. Uh, take the mesh that I got here, and uh, we'll fit it in there. So. Today's episode is all about, I got the front half of the windage tray completed. It actually clears the oil pan. Um, so I just need to get it installed, uh, semi-installed, welded, tacked into place, whatever I end up doing um, so that I can finish this project up. But we're gonna start moving on or forward with the mesh and uh, give ourselves some uh, some serious windage capabilities. So. We're going to knock down some of that windage on the crank. And with the crankshaft scraper and then the windage screens installed with these windage trays, uh, we should be making at least 20 to 30 horsepower more, I'm assuming. Uh, there's some of these things, you know, uh, aftermarket ones, they make upwards of 60 horsepower more. But uh, I think all that depends on how much cubic inch you have and how much power you're already making. So, but... Uh, yeah, so stand by and I'll uh, I'll bust out a template and I'll show you how to make these screens. Five minutes later. So step one, start with some basic construction paper. <clears throat> and what I've done is I've taken our windage tray here that was on the front half of the engine and I've taped it in here um, with somewhat of the contour of the windage tray. And then on the outside, uh, all I did was trace where our openings were. Some of them will be left um, open and some of them will, will not be. So uh, I'll have to determine that here in a second how we're going to do this. But uh, as you can see, it's real basic and simple on how you make this mesh. Sorry about that. Um, I, uh, that way you can transfer this mesh template over to the flat piece of mesh itself. All right. So once we get this template made up, uh, we'll transfer it to the mesh, and we'll start cutting things out. Five minutes later. 
Step two, we cut out our construction paper template from the underside of our uh, windage tray. And it's just as simple as transferring this onto here. Okay, now I did screw up a little bit. I wanted to leave some mesh in this area. So uh, I'll mount the windage tray back on there again for a few minutes, find out how much I want to cover up, and then I'll just not color that in. Five minutes later. Step three, transfer your template onto your mesh. Dunzo. Five minutes later. The next step, cut it out with some tin snips and a cutoff wheel. I found that the Dremel cutoff wheel works really well on this, but uh, it may be better with a, uh, with a death wheel. I have no idea. I didn't try it. Five minutes later. Step five, hand form that mesh to fit your windage tray. It's a pain in the butt. Hope you enjoy it. Now, I think this is about as far as I'm gonna get today. I need more cutoff wheels. So we'll leave the rest for tomorrow. So I'll see you tomorrow.